Hi, so let's start with another session of embedded coding. So today we will be focusing on UART. So in this uh, session, I will be showing you how to configure UART in STM32 using CubeID and uh, how we will actually be sending some uh, data over UART and receiving it in our PC, okay? Okay, so for this session, I will be using this STM board, one USB to serial converter and one logic analyzer. So we will be uh, sending data over UART to our laptop or PC via this logic anal uh, via this uh, USB to serial converter, and the logic analyzer we will be utilizing to see actually how the data is getting transmitted. So practically these are wires, electrical wires that are connected. So we will be seeing how actually a data which we will be sending is getting transmitted via these wires. What is happening in this wire? So for that we will be using the logic analyzer. Okay, as you can see that I have arranged the same setup as uh, I have already mentioned. So this is the same setup arranged. This is the logic analyzer. This is the TTL converter, serial converter, and this is the board. And I have used one more uh, breadboard to do the connection of the cable. I can show you that also. This is the breadboard which I have used. Okay, so now let's do the coding for this uh, STM board. Now I am starting the coding that is from the previous session that is LED blink LED only. So here uh, we will be initializing the pins for UART. So normally in this kind of STM boards we have one dedicated UART that is already connected to this USB. So we don't need to connect an external uh, serial to USB converter. But I will be using a separate uh, UART uh with which i will be utilizing this so i will be using uart1 with that so let me enable both the uart for now so let's enable this in asynchronous mode and uart1 also in asynchronous mode so here you can see this is pa10 and pa9 okay in the schematic of the board we will see that where is pa10 so pa10 is this one that is the third pin on the connector and PA9 is the first pin. So I have connected this yellow to the PA9 and this green to the PA10. Okay, so this is done. So now let's uh, save it. So it will automatically generate the code. So now in the main file, you could able to see that there are two UART added that is UART1 and UART2. So now to write using UART, we will be utilizing the printf function that uh, is uh, the uh, one of the easiest way to use that. For that, you have to go to this core section inside system call and you need to utilize this one, this write file, okay? And this to write using the printf and for reading, you can use the scanf and for that you, we can use this uh, read that weak function let's go and define this in the main okay, i have defined both the function in write i have given uh, uart1 and same thing uart2 so there are two uart uh, transmit is declared so whenever i will say printf so it will be uh, doing an uart transmit and whenever I would say receive uh, scanf, then it will be receiving data over UART2. So I can also write uh, receive UART1 also. Okay. So for time being, I will just comment out this. Okay. And I want to happen this transmit only when I push this blue button okay for that i need to enable the blue button let's see i think yeah the blue push button is already enabled and it is enabled in the external interrupt mode so we can use the callback function of any external interrupt so let's go to the external interrupt you can find this is in this this is the file for external interrupt and if we go into the external interrupt we can have this HAL GPIO external interrupt callback. So this is also a weak function. Let's go and uh, define this weak function also in the main file. So here I will be defining it. 
okay this is how the main uh, external interrupt function is defined and i will be checking that this interrupt is caused from this uh, button b1 and i will be giving the command of hello world to print okay and this will be transmitted over the uart okay so let's save it and build the code fine so to use this function we need to define the stdio.h in user include okay build it also three more warnings are coming let's see Okay, now it is clear that we have defined all the functions and we don't have any warnings or error. So previously I have by mistakenly defined it under this user, user begin code under user. So it should be defined under this user code begin. Okay, so now it is done. So let flash the code. So, okay, flashing is done. On the serial port, we have two things connected. One is the ST-Link debugger and one is our this uh, USB to serial converter. So, first we will check what is the status in the COM3 port. So, we connect to COM3 and say connect. Okay, this baud rate and data size parity all are uh, like what you have set in the UART configuration for this. So, you, we can check the UART configuration here. In the main file here you see that it the baud rate is 115200 uart word length is 8 bit there is one stop bit parity we have put to none right so these are the basic configuration required here that is parity is none size is 8 bit and baud rate is this one so if i press this it should print hello so it is printing hello so this is done for com3 so now let's uh, see for our USB to serial converter what it is printing. So USB to serial converter is connected to COM6. So we will go in COM6 and connect it. And if we press, let's see, okay, this is also working. So now this one is clear that we are having the data going via these wires to there, to there. Now what I will do, I will just stop the program, okay and uh, disconnect this board so there is no usb connection to this board you can see and i will just provide power to the board via this usb converter so if i just turn it on so there is a 5 volt and a ground so 5 volt and ground we need to provide so so now the entire connection is over this usb ttl and I will be monitoring the lines using this logic analyzer. So even if I press now, so hello is working. So let's open logic analyzer and see when I send hello, what it is actually coming. So we have, we will start the logic analyzer and see what actually happens. Let me just slow down it. Okay, we I am just zooming out so that it is easy to see any fluctuation happening. So I will start the logic analyzer, and so when I press this, there is some pulses happening. You can see. So if whenever we are pressing, you can see yeah this pulse happened. So let's pause and see what actually happened over there. So let me zoom it out. So whenever, okay, I will full screen this. So whenever I am pressing uh, this button, then it is transmitting some data and the data is captured by logic analyzer. That is this data. So if I want to analyze the data, so this is channel number two and save. 
So now you can see that we have got some data with specific value. Uh, okay, let's put it into ASCII so you can able to see. Okay, see now we are actually sending this hello. Then there is a gap and then we are sending word. Then there is a gap and then we are sending a slash n over the UART. Correct. So this is how actually the data is being sent. So these uh, whenever we are sending some data, it is converted into ASCII and then its corresponding value is transmitted. So how it is uh, now one can ask, OK, when we are sending hello, what is this E? Why, why this E is represented like this? So this is nothing but let's see the ASCII value of E. So if I see, let's see the binary value of E. So it is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So you see that this whole thing is represented here. So every high is one and every low is zero and every high is one. So here the first bit is zero, then one, then one, then zero, then one, then zero, zero, zero. There is this three zero, then again one, then zero and then one. So this is how the whole sequence starts. So every bit is sent like that. And also there is one thing to note here. There will be a start bit and a stop bit for every channel. Okay. Okay. So now the next thing is that in UART, the basic configuration required is only this baud rate. Okay. Word length. If there is a stop bit or a parity bit is there or not. So let's include a parity bit and see what will be the difference in it. So if I include a parity bit. So here it is, we have even and odd parity. Let's select the parity bit as even. Go here. And we update the parity as even. Okay. Save it. Build it. So now we need to connect the debugger to flash it. So we connected the debugger. We flash the code. And start it. We stop it. We remove the USB connection. So it is running. And now you can see that here the let's see if hello world is getting printed. So you see there is some issue coming when we are receiving the data here because we haven't set the parity. So we'll close it. We modify the parity as even. Okay. Then open the serial port again. And now if I press, it is giving, okay, error Y. I give the parity as odd, open. Okay, close. Okay, data size should be seven. Let's see now. Okay, so what was the issue happening is that uh, in our, uh, okay, I will will see in the logic analyzer and then I will explain you what is happening. So I am starting the logic analyzer. Okay. So logic analyzer started, I will be pressing, I we have captured one data. So we'll look into it. So this is now the data we converted into ASCII. So we convert it into ASCII and you see it, it is giving hello D7, some world like that, right? So what, what is actually happening is that for every byte that we are transmitting, we are also appending one extra bit. That is that bit is the parity bit. So when we append a parity bit to it, then we are sending an extra bit to the same uh, like extra one bit is added to the same eight byte of data. So every character is broken into eight bits and every single uh, the, sorry, the character is have broken into bits and one of the bit in that data frame is used as a parity bit. So maybe we can look into this one now. So this is how it is happening those from zero to seven bit we are using as a data bit and the last bit 
that is the eighth bit we are using as a parity bit so if i go and select here seven as a data bit then there is no issue we will go on receiving the correct so as soon as i select it here eight bit then uh, we have some other value coming that is a wrong value because this the last bit is also treated as the uh, data but we are not using that eight bit as a data we are using up to seven bit as a data and the eight bit last bit we are using for the parity check so then this hello world is printing completely fine so i hope this is clear so this much you need to understand from the point of view you are if any other thing you want to understand more on you are let me know in the comment Okay, I hope this uh, up to this point it is clear that we have di discussed about UART and how the bits are being transferred over UART. So, and we I have shown you what is the importance of the parity also in the UART and uh, the bit size when we vary what happens. So, and via logic analyzer we have also seen how actually the bits look into the logic analyzer. So, using that we can uh, we can we can say that. So, after this session I hope you have a good clear understanding of UART. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe the channel. Thank you.